Silence in court. Silence. Silence. Thank you. Hello, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for coming tonight. Uh, for Freedom of West, we are changed. Another talk with the man here, Rob Freeman. Right, before we sort of start, a lot of new faces, which is fantastic. Good to see you all. Um, met Rob, come across Rob about three months ago, and uh, got a phone call. And this gent's uh, speaking on the phone, he's telling me, he said, I've got some information for you. I'm going to love this. If we use this information, this could turn everything around. This is what we've been looking for. I've been using this information. I've got in a bit of trouble for it, but I need to get this out and I need some help. So it's coming through Kids Come Radio and he's just, I'm hearing this on the phone. I'm thinking, it's fantastic. It's what we're looking for. So then um, the conversation carried on. He said, we need to meet somewhere. So I'm thinking, right. So he said, so what we'll do is I'll get this information, we'll pass it to you and we'll take it from there and see you know, if we can meet up somewhere in Manchester. So I'm getting a bit nervous at this point here. Yeah. This is somewhere I've never heard of. Give me a call. First thing I did, being a man, just give Alex a call. I said, right, I think you need to meet me with this, this Rob chap and go down and meet him. Met Rob, and within, what, five minutes of this pouring of information, I knew he was, you know, the real deal. So what Rob's going to talk, what, how Rob explained it to me then, then with a bit of paper, with a bit of cigarette pieces, and this, that, the other. So we've got the board tonight, and we're going to go through it. It's a lot of information to take in, but it is there to help us. And if we can sort of, it's going to help us, because we're all a unit here tonight as well. But if we can help each other with the knowledge that we've got, with the people power as well, this, this information, and we use it in political practice, it can actually make a big difference. So, in about three quarters of an hour, we'll have a break, because there's a lot of information, and we'll come back to it. So, what I say, uh, give a big Freedom of the West, we are changed. Welcome to Rob Freeman. Thank you. First of all, thanks a lot. I thought it'd be three men and a dog coming to this one. I'd have a dog at home. I'd have a dog at home. Have you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so thanks a lot for coming on a horrible rainy Monday night in Manchester. Not, not that there's anything wrong with Manchester, but it's always raining. <laughs> yeah, so tonight's so, talk. A quick one on pattern recognition. Um, I'll tell you what that is. is as you are probably all fairly aware people, that we easily manipulated and brainwashed. Uh, so I just want, I've done this on one of the shows that I do. I just want to give you a quick five minutes on that to show how easy it is for us to be sucking into this system, this this matrix system that we're all trying to get. We're all we're, we're up. Sorry, I'm too far away. We're all aware of it. Uh, we're all aware of it, and we want to get away from it, don't we? Uh, and I just want to show you that for about five minutes how very easy it is that we're all sucking in. Well, I've got a, little, a couple of little examples of how that happens. But the main reason tonight. I want to talk about is this. Everybody's heard of a trust. Everybody's heard, but nobody really knows what it is unless you've really studied it. Um, trust estate's the same thing. I'm going to go into that. That's the main bulk of the talk tonight. And if we've got time, I don't know how long we've got. Uh, I did a show on Critical Mass Radio two or three weeks ago talking about this sort of stuff. Every time I talk on and get some, try and get some important information, for some reason, uh, my microphone goes intermittent and I can't get, I don't want it to leave paranoid, but I'm struggling to get this and this out. So stuff like this is brilliant because we're here and we're doing it. So that's the main, the main bulk of everything tonight. I'm just going to clear that. So this is the main thing tonight, just to stay with that. But I want to just spend five minutes, I've been doing this stuff a long time now. Uh, I started off in the, you know, the free man movement, uh, I, I suppose you're all aware of it. Uh, lawful against legal stuff, um, hence my name, Rob Freeman. I got into trouble about five years ago financially. I had to pack work in and I became a single parent. Speak up with me. I'm the guy in the back. Okay, okay. Yeah, just give it a shout if you can't hear me. Um, I got into trouble for, like, financially about five years ago. I became a single parent, I had to pack work in. Uh, after three months, all my savings went. Uh, so I took on my two kids um, away from the mum. Um, I've got my money coming in, my savings have gone, I thought, damn, what the hell am I going to do? I wrote down anything I've got, to, I've got to pay out and everything that I've got coming in, which weren't a lot, and I had nowhere to turn. Anyway, um, as luck would have it, I got a speeding ticket going 34 in the theatre. Uh, I'm not going to give the top story because it's a bit long. Cut a long story short, just by pure luck or somebody's passing me information, this is about five years ago. I found out that the ticket itself was an offer of a contract which from a corporation, a private corporation, even though it was the police. Uh, I saw a talk by a chap called John Harris who explained that everything is a corporation and then the penny dropped. And from there on, I'm, I don't know how many thousands of hours of study I've put into this. Uh, in fact, it's coming a bit of, of an obsession, to be honest. So I'm either looking after my kids 
doing some food shopping, cleaning the house, or doing this. So I made a decision when I first found out is that everything I'm going to tell, I've done quite a few talks, and now I host the radio show, and I made a decision that everything I tell people, I will not tell anybody anything, that some of it's passed on, I've got from many different sources, and other good researchers, but everything I'm about to say is I'm living it, and this is my brother, and you will vouch for me. Everything I say, I'm living it myself. Uh, I've got a court. I would have been the first person in the country to arrest a judge or a magistrate before Roger Hayes. I took three people with me. First of all, the magistrates ran off. Then they adjourned it and got a district judge two weeks later, and he ran off screaming for security. Anyway, but long story short, I've never actually lost in court. And I've never, I've never successfully been taken to court for a demand for money. So I'm obviously doing something right. And this is using this free man stuff. Uh, it's lawful against legal. But since, I would say three years ago, I started looking at trusts. What, what is a trust? What does it mean? And then I kind of went away from it. Um, and then just before Christmas last year, 2011, I tried, I, I don't know if most of you are aware that every mortgage is fraudulent. Every bank loan, every credit card, it's fraudulent. They don't lend you anything. You create those funds with your signature. And so I had a got mortgage company last year and I thought, oh, I've got this. Like I do, I, I, I use myself as a guinea pig and I went for it. Anyway, cut long story short, it is the only time that I lost in court. But I didn't actually lose. What they did is they kind of sideswiped me. Um, and I was due to get kicked out of my house nine days before Christmas using this foot. I proved, I proved that the judge, judges committed fraud. I beat the barristers, I beat everybody, and they still were going to repossess my house. So it's the first time ever I backed down, and I thought, I'm not going to get kicked out, my kids have got to live somewhere, so I backed down on that. And so, this is, what, nine days before last Christmas. And from there, something, this information, when you're coming from uh, a standpoint of honour, and you're trying to do what you, think, what you feel is right in it, the information gets handed to you in the right order. So, after this, Episode with the mortgage people, uh, the bailiffs come and everything. I managed to stop it by becoming a slave again. Uh, and so I now, it was, I think it was for ten and a half grand arrears or something. If anyone wants to ask a question, just just fire away. Uh, ten and a half grand arrears. I made an offer of payment and I've secured my house, but I can't afford to miss a payment now, or they can just come and kick me out. So this was nine days before last Christmas. For some reason, some trust trust stuff popped up again. And so I re-looked at it again, like I'd done two years previously. And then from there on, what I uncovered was that a lot of people in the free man movement are using the, uh, they're in lawful rebellion, or they're using the legal against lawful argument. They're scared of the, um, the straw man, you know the corporate fiction name, the old capital name. Um, are, are most of you aware of this sort of stuff, yeah? Is there anybody who's not so familiar with it? No? Right, so I don't need to explain that then. So we have, a, we have a corporate fictional name attached to us, don't we? Uh, in my case, it's an all capital name of... Now, apart from this last five or six years, most people didn't know. Well, that's not really me, is it? It's, it's a fiction, it's a, it's a corporate, it's all sorts, it's many, many things. That's it, yeah. Well, I used all those arguments in court and they just sideswiped but I still never lost, but I never won either. It was kind of a stalemate. And what I realised is, everyone, um, this is created by your birth certificate, as you, as you mostly probably know. Your birth certificate is actually what's called a foreign scientist trust. Interesting. Everything, everything about Italian, everything in life, always comes back to trust. Everything is trust. But unbeknownst to me at the time, I was using this. I'm not Rob Freeman or Capitals. So what would they do? They'd send me something in. Oh, that's an R. Mr. Rob Freeman. Again, it's a legal title. It's not me. I'm the human being. I'm just Rob Freeman in that right, you know what I'm saying? They, they can't issue a demand, a financial demand, on him, the human being, as we know. All they can do is contract with that or capitals or that legal title name. So having said that, the reason I'm mentioning this is I got to doing studying trusts and realised that this argument doesn't work. And there's no reason to be scared of that. That all capitals name that everyone's scared of using in court, I use it in court. I actually make them call me that and they can cut they can write it in 
You can write in what capitals, you can write in <coughs> Sir Rob Freeman, Queen Rob Freeman, I don't care. They can call me anything they want because everything boils down to trust. So I'm just going to cover that in, in about five minutes, but I just want to tell you about this pattern recognition stuff and how easy we are brainwashed. Well, I just have to consult my notes here, yeah. I've wrote some notes out, so it's only a couple of pages long. Okay, you, you, I did a, a long 39 page bloody article for, for a website about how we are tricked and deceived, how your mind works, how easily we're brainwashed, very stuck and very easy. Uh, and I did it on a show I think a few weeks ago and condensed it to about five pages. But I just want to tell you what roughly happens in your mind, how the workings of your mind. The, the, ones, that, the, the ones that believe they have the right to control and own everything, they know all this and this is how it works. And it's very subtle and it's subliminal, but we don't know it's happening. Well, we do now, because we're becoming aware. The, the 95 or 99% of, I don't like to call them normal people, I don't like to call them sheep, I know Alex likes to call them sheep. Well, they are sheep, at the end of the day, they are a big flock of sheep. They've got no idea this is happening. It's the greatest form of control when you don't know what's happening, because you just go along, you think you're consenting. So, I'll just tell you some facts out. I studied the mind for about six months and, and figured out what actually happens. So, your mind works on what's called pat pattern recognition. It does it subtly and you don't know what's happening. It happens from when you're a very small baby. As soon as you're born, you, you, your mind is constantly recognising patterns it has to do to evolve and, and to, to engage in everyday life as a baby. So, your conscious mind, that's the thinking, rational, logical mind. Um, can process two million bits of information per second. You think about that compared to a computer. This is your conscious mind that I'm thinking, right, I'm going to write that, I'm going to, this is what I'm living every day. It can process two million bits of information per second, which is unbelievable, isn't it? However, your unconscious mind can process four and a half billion bits of information per second. So which one is superior? It's not a question of superior or inferior in a way, you need both. You need your conscious mind to consciously drive your car or unlock yeah, your things. It's like you're driving it on reserve. When you've got all that, you've got that, that turbo charge thing sat in the back that you're just driving along. Okay, well perhaps driving is a bad example, but to do some sort of task, usually, um, you use your conscious mind, don't you? Or to calculate, think about things logically. Yeah? So, as I said, your unconscious mind processes four and a half billion bits of information a second. But, in doing that, your unconscious mind, or your subconscious, in order to do that, it absorbs information, and it has to do it by recognising that everything is the same, it looks for patterns. So for instance, a colour, a number, a symbol, this is what they know, the ones running through it, this is why they do it. It recognises everything is the same and, and just throws it in. Now we're not aware that this is happening. The reason it has to do this is, if it didn't do that, um, every time you had to tie your shoelaces, for instance, or make a cup of tea, you'd have to relearn the whole process every single time. So this is why you see the has to work like this. And you'll see why it's important in a minute. Uh, so the whole lot was into the subconscious mind. So 95% of everything around, the subconscious takes it in, but you don't, you're not aware. It even takes stuff in while you're sleeping. These signs that are up here now, this, all this, you have took that in and so have I. Everything you see in here, we're not aware that we've taken that in. You know, has anybody ever seen Darren Brown? Chap, chap on TV. Yeah. He, he uses a... <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. He uses a thing called NLPs, which is he knows how it works. And he knows what people are thinking, but he doesn't. He puts suggestions, signs, symbols, colours, and he knows what they're saying. Because he's putting it into them, a bit like what happens to us on a massive scale. Yeah? So 95% of all information you take in with your subconscious, you only take in 5% with your conscious mind, which is what we live in every day. If you think about it, we're spending all our time, all our days, with only 5% of the information. So what is happening with the rest of it? So I'm going to cut this short so I can get on to trust. So I'll tell you what I'll do. So it's all subliminal, and they're manipulating us by this, by sounds, colours, symbols, numbers, or whatever. Uh, I'll cut this short, I'll tell you what I'll do. See if anybody can figure exactly what this is, and it's just it's a very small example of how we are manipulated and sucking. I can name a thousand, but obviously not have time. So I'm going to write a phrase now. Can everybody read that? Yeah. Everybody sit into it. It says, Oh, when I know to free hate, to sever no one. 
Now, does anybody know what that means or have got any idea what that actually is? Not you. Sorry, I'll ask talking. to you. Sorry, you're bored. Telephone number. Pardon? Telephone number. How do you know that? Excellent, Paul. I'm excited. I'll buy you a cigar. Brilliant, Alex. I'll tell you what that is. Okay. That is. I'll show you why it's that. Brilliant, Alex. This is how your unconscious mind sees things and how easy it is to remember. Now it seems making sense now, isn't it? Okay. If you're watching TV, or well, we don't watch it, perhaps most of us, but normal people watching telly, they see an advert, it's just got a phrase or a sound or a quote. Hold one I know to three, eight to seven hours. 30, 60 seconds later, another advert comes on for a product that you don't particularly want, you don't particularly need. But, pattern recognition, the advert, the second, third advert, a minute or two later, flashes up a telephone number. What is your subconscious mind will bump, instantly recognises that pattern. Oh, when I know, two, three, eight, two, seven, oh, one. You break your conscious mind, seems to be exactly the same. That's just one example of a, a million and one. Like all compared. Pardon? Like that. Yeah, then, um, we were talking about this on the way down, weren't we? If I said to you, every little else, so who is it? It's Tesco, isn't it? Uh, who's loving it? It's McDonald's, isn't it? So the little tiny cat, but they're just small examples. So, object of this were just to show you how easy it is to, for your subconscious to be manipulated. I could do a full talk on that, but it'd probably get pretty boring. Does dyslexia mean it's slightly different? If you dyslexia. <laughs> yeah, you end up bringing the police by mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And asking for the fire brigade. I've got a little bit of a laugh. To be honest, I'm actually studying um, autism, dyslexia. Yeah, yeah. Dyslexia. Oh, yeah? yeah? I've got a few friends. It's a gift. It's a gift. The reason it's a gift is you're coming away from the program because you don't recognise, is it, is, it, is, it, is it numbers or letters? Words. Is it words? Like Not numbers, just words. Even you said that. Okay. Are you just yeah, as well? Yeah, yeah. It's a gift, stick with it. You're, you, you've basically said bollocks to it and you've come away from the system. You because do see things differently. No, it's right. Yeah, it's a gift. So is autism and so is... I can't remember the last one. Asperger's over it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a gift. They call it, they call it an affliction or a condition, don't they? But it's not, it's a gift. Disorder. Disorder is the word. What? Disorder is the word they use. Disorder, yeah. Disorder. Yeah. Well, that's it's actually, it's actually it's increased order. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's your own, you, you, it's your own order, isn't it? Away from there. Well, Asperger's, I believe, is a superior order. I think you do both Asperger's, you say. I think you're right, I think you're right. But I've, I've got more research on this sort of thing. So, I just want to show you that, just to show you. How your mind works, and how easy we're all sucking in, but not any longer. Okay, time on. Right. Trust, trust the state. What is a trust? What's it all about? <laughs> Such a powerful word, the most important word, apart from the word. <laughs> so, you know, apart from that word, that's the most important word. No trust. Pardon? Trust, most important word, apart from just saying no. So all we've got to do to, to beat this system, all we've got to do is drink together and just say no. We can't do anything without our consent. The trick is into that consent. So, the most important word for me is trust. Everything comes back to trust. The way they're deceiving us with those adverts, we're entrusting them. Everything's trust. Governments we entrust, you entrust your health advisors, your doctors, your education for your kids, everybody, we trust in everybody. People say to me, um, so Rob, well, we've, we've given our power away, haven't we? And I said, no, we've not given anything away. You can't give your power away because we are the power. It's not something we've got, it's what we are. Uh, what we've given away is the control of that power. We've entrusted people in perceived authority that we perceive as being authority. See Tim Nodding there. We perceive they've got authority over us. And basically we've all become we're all suffering from apathy. But we're not now because we're kicking in doing something. Um, so we trust, we've been trusted for our parents did and their parents before them. So every trust is linked to an estate, and estate is linked to a trust, it's the same thing really. 
So I want to try and condense. Um, everything is trust. Everything. No matter where you go, every avenue of life, whether it's law, courts, police, government, anything, it's all down to trust. So, go back to my name again. So I go on to this, like I say, after this uh, mortgage stuff, started studying this, I use this for absolutely everything. So far, they've got no answer to me. Okay, that all capital's name again. What's it called? Capital's diminishing maximum. Yeah, maximum loss of rights because you're a dead entity. Okay, maximum loss of rights. Um, that's what we have in association with. A lot of people call it a straw man. But it, it is a straw man. It's a corporation. It's a legal fiction. It's all sorts. No good arguing in courts. What I found out is that trust law, trust law is the highest form of law, of law, sorry. There is nothing higher than trust law. Uh, statute law is by consent the lowest form of law. We've got common law, common law of the land. It's still a man-made law, that's the early Freeman stuff. So what I did is I took everything back from Freeman stuff and realised that this is what's been going off since time. The common law of the land is the nearest thing to natural law that we can think of. Um, it, it replicates God's law, natural law, but a man cannot make another law for another man. It can only offer contracts, it cannot make another law. I can't make a law for you, you can't make a law for me, government can't make a law. Laws are not made, they're natural, they're God-given if you're religious, they're done by our Creator. Uh, and we, all we can really do is mirror them. So bear in mind a man can't make a law. How can a man create a fiction? He can't. So what I realised is, trust law, highest form of law, the reason it's the highest form of law is because, let me just look on the sheet, okay, I'm not a religious person, so we'll call him creator, trust law, I've got a, God or whoever created me and you and everybody else gave us free dominion over planet earth to do as we please, apart from, we don't cause harm to anyone. I know a lot of freemen say, harm, don't cause harm, don't cause loss, don't, don't, uh, be forging your contracts. Forget that. There's one more, and it's universal, don't cause harm. Because everything comes under harm. Loss comes under harm, forging your contracts come under harm. It's simple. You don't need to, you don't need to be told what to do. You know where you're doing something wrong, you know inside you, don't you? Don't cause harm to another living soul. That's it, that's the law. Done. So, God created me created everybody and gave us free dominion over the earth. As long as we don't cause harm, we can do as we please. Brilliant. So he creates man, that's man, not being sexist, man, woman, whatever. Yeah? That's a trust. That's the first trust, that's what they're using against us. Somebody earlier said they think the Vatican it wasn't you, they said the Vatican's the highest. I tend to agree with you. The reason they get away with it more than Sweat on it. Uh, I, think the Va I think the Vatican with the City of London Crown are the highest, perpetr uh, worst perpetrators rather. They're the, they're the ones running the things. And I'll tell you why. Magna Carta gets ignored in this country. Common law gets ignored. Why are they ignored? It's because the Vatican used God. They believe that they can come between me, you, God, we can't. That's the trust created from God or our Creator to us. The Vatican has, everything gets hijacked. The Vatican has done that. Sorry, have done that. The Vatican have done it, and everybody is subservient to them. Corporations, the Illuminati, British monarchy, in my research, which is my opinion, you can check it out. The reason they call the shots is because they, the Pope believes he is the Vicar of Christ. So it makes it above us. So he tries to supersede our trust. The way they've done it is they've introduced a series of trusts themselves. So I'm a big believer in Paul Italian, you know, I think Alex is. The only way that we're going to bring this system down or create our new system for ourselves is to mirror back what they're doing. Now this is what I'm doing in court, this is what I'm doing with everybody. All I'm doing is mirroring back this trust relationship is everything. How can anybody come between me and God or me and my creator? So instead of the old Freeman stuff where you claim that. How can you mirror back a broken image though? 
broken. Well, it's broken, isn't it? They're, they're, they're beating the play, so how can you remember that back? You've got to put them back where they belong. I see what you're saying. It's not a broken image. What they're doing is they've created a, they've they've created a series of trusts. I'm going to tell you what they are. Four trusts. One sets it up. Three three other ones. One takes away our lands and real property. The other one takes away our personal possessions, and the third one takes away our souls. The reason they're getting away with it is nobody's arguing back. Nobody's come forward. They've made a claim, a right to what they think. And they're treating us, I'm going to explain what a trust is in a minute. We have become trustees. There's three parts to a trust, I'm going to explain to it. We've now become trustees of our old trust. The three parts to a trust. The trustee is the shit end of the stick. It's the employee, the, sh the shelf stacker in Tesco. He gets told what to do. That's what we've become because the Vatican have claimed the right to do it. And for hundreds of years, nobody's claimed anything back. There are some people do it, and that's what I'm doing. We're out of time. We're going to have a break for five minutes. So, what you're saying is, all they've done is put a claim of right that nobody's rebutted, nobody's argued by. So they've put their own trusts out, making us trustees. All I do, and I've got to, that's how every court works, that's how every major organisation works, it's an abuse of trust, it's breach of trust. So what they do is, the reason, the reason judges can commit fraud, the reason the police can offer with no evidence, is because all they're doing is switching the arrangement so where they come the trustees. And all I've done is mirror it back and switch it back again. So far, I've used it one, two, three times. <coughs> I've used it five times in court, and I've used it a dozen times through banks, insurance, whatever. And so far, the clerk to the justices, the legal experts, and the district judges, not one person has argued back against me. And I tell them in court, this is how I see the trust. I'm going to explain to you the position in a minute. I say, this is how I see it. Every judge, every magistrate, every police officer, they swear oaths. They are servants, they're, out, they're public servants. Somebody, uh, I guess I'm sure I can't remember, said they're not public servants, they are public servants. Whatever they're performing a function of government, they are in public service. And if you're a public servant, you're a public trustee. So what I do in court is switch it back and appoint them as trustees, which is their rightful position with me being the leader of the trust, which I'm going to explain in a bit. <coughs> so that's how it works. Is this making any sort of sense so far? Yeah. yeah. So do you know when you're in court, you need to swear, swear the, um, to what they do? Do you know when you're in court and you say you're not religious and you, you should really even back up with their point of view? Just swear on the bar. Uh, I always take a few words out of the court, and the corruption starts as soon as you get served through security. As soon as you get past in, the corruption starts straight away. I go to the usher, I didn't just give him that name because I was afraid to find that old capital's name. Now I just give it to him. But what I'm saying is, are you saying you still got to swear on the bar? I'm just coming to it now. So I give her the name, I'm not surrounded with the name. She can call me Rob Robert, Mr. All Capitals, I don't care. They can call me being Elvis Presley, I don't care. So now I'm going to court. From that moment I give her a name, I do not recognise their jurisdiction at all because it's, it's statute law. It's the lowest form of law and it's only applicable by consent. They can try and trick me and do what they want, I do not consent. I don't even want to be there. The reason you go to court is it's a trustees meeting, that's what it is. It's a lot more than that, it's actually a church, but I'll go into that another time. It is. This is why we're struggling to win. But essentially, it's a trustees meeting. And what they do is they make us the trustees. So, imagine Richard Branson going along to a trustees meeting. Would he have to swear? Would he have to stand where they're telling you? We're acting like trustees. We come in when they tell us, we stand in an invisible dock, you get a Bible, we've been told we're acting like trustees, we're acting like employees. The judges are magistrates. I used to hate them for five years, but what I realise is, and you're not going to believe this, is they're doing nothing wrong. The judges are magistrates that are locking people up for nothing, are actually doing nothing wrong. And that's a hard thing to get your head around. It took me about 18 months to realise Roger H got locked up in one bill, did he not? There was no, there was no jury court, were there? Uh, he got to the court and he, uh, and one judge's decision is described, 
Yeah. They've got locked up. They can, they can do that, though, can't they? Dentist prisoners are making a comeback, aren't they? Now, let's, let's have a think about that. Just, and I'm not here. But why did that happen? Roger you knows more about lawful and legal stuff than I do. <coughs> Excuse me, I met Roger about three or four times. How did he get locked up? The reason he got locked up is he acted like a trustee. That's all he did. He didn't use the trust, and this is what I want to get to. There's a lot of intelligent, well informed people going to court and fighting battles. We've got Kevin Annett doing the um, stuff in the Vatican. And it's fantastic work, but nobody's fulfilling this trust thing. I can't stress. And I might be wrong, and I say to people, if I'm wrong, get back to me and show me some evidence that I'm wrong. But I can't. Nobody's done it so far. The legal people, the experts, the barristers, the judges, nobody's arguing back. And the reason they're not arguing back is because I know I'm right. The reason I'm right is because I've used it myself and it works. They cannot beat it because they can't come between you and God. You've just got a real point. Okay. Let's get into this trust thing and the, what the, the meat potatoes and everything that is happening. So, Rob Freeman, all capitals, we've covered that. What is it? I'll tell you what it is. I've borrowed this model, by the way, from this Dean Clifford I told you about. So not mine. It's the easiest way of explaining things, so I've nicked it off him for, for now. So, Rob Freeman, all capitals, or whatever all capital name you've got, what is it? It's a corporation, we've sent it to trust, but we're not supposed to know about that. Uh, it's a legal fiction, it's all that, but what it is, is it's a, and I can't spell, so, oh, it's a convenience to write it out. It's what's called a legal presumption. That's what the all capital name or the mister is. It's a legal presumption. It's, it's been presumed by police, judges, solicitors, magistrates, government, everybody. It's a legal presumption. And what it, it took me ages to figure out what this is, as well as all those things that I said. And all it is is all your bills that you get at home, all your demands, everything you get, you'll be in Miss so and so or Mrs. Or if it's not got that legal type, legal title, it'll be in all capitals. Look at your driving stuff, it's always in capitals. Anything from who had trouble with police, come back in all capitals, won't it? Whatever your name is, it's always there. 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 If everything's corporation, so limited liability, doesn't that mean that our name is for limited liability? Being a corporation. Good question. That is a corporation, like I said. Um, but it's not got limited liability because if you Tesco PLC, whatever they call, is a body of people in it. Um, their employees will be working. That name there is, I represent it, I'm one human being, it is a corporation, but I'm there under full commercial liability. Um, they take an insurance out, it's corporate. They're making me a corporation, but I'm not insuring myself. When I turn up at court, I'm under full commercial liability. I'm, they want us to turn up at court assuming full liability, while they're accountable to no one by shoving liability. It's all about pushing paper backwards and forwards. Paper, as in papal, Vatican. That's why you pay, by the way, PayPal on your computer. Someone by the Vatican. No, you know PayPal? It's PayPal. It's PayPal. But they're at the top. But what I'm saying is, the push liability, it's all about shoving paper backwards and forwards so that we assume liability. So that's what this is. It's a legal presumption. What it is, is and it's took me ages to figure this out, probably four and a half years. Uh, and I was, I'm not that person, I'm not Rob Freeman, but I'm, I'm Rob of the Freeman family and it's a lot of bollocks. They don't wash, they don't wash. And the reason they don't wash is because that's a facility and a tool for us to use. We use that. We can use it. And I do use it. And all it is is they throw a net out to my house with that name on it, hoping that they're going to get a buy. And most people buy it because we think that's us. So we represent it, don't we? So we think it's us. And it is us. Some part of us is in there, but it's not the whole us. Does that make sort of sense? A part of us is in there because it encompasses quite a lot of things. A corporation, a trust, so it's part of us, but it's not the whole us. And we can separate away from that and use it. Right, it's hard for me to get through this without being confused and trying to make it as simple as possible. So, it's a legal presumption. It's a legal presumption. What they presume in court is, is that, right, okay, a trust has got. It's called the Holy Trinity. Um, it's called the Holy Trinity. Uh, Dean Clifford calls it. The trust has got three parts to it. 
It's got a beneficiary, an executor, sometimes called an administrator, and a trustee. Um, three parts of the trust. So we're going to have copied off the Cliff as a triangle. Okay. <laughs> the beneficiary is the person or the human being who the trust was set up for, for someone's benefit. It's set up by what's called a grantor or a creator. Too complicated, too long winded to go into. A grantor or creator sets up a trust for the benefit of this person here. This person here, the beneficiary, is the most important person in that trust. This beneficiary, now we are all beneficiaries of our own trust. This uh, birth certificate legal fiction thing is a trust and it will set up for us. Any benefits from this go to this person, which is me. But you have to be careful because all liability can also come to me. So, if you just bear in mind, the beneficiary is the person that the trust was set up for. Okay. The beneficiary, like myself, I might be a lazy son, which I am. So I might want to appoint someone to run the the to run the trust for me, to make sure it's all room that I get the maximum benefits. So I can appoint somebody called the executor. They run the policy of that trust, and their sole purpose is to make sure that every benefit going comes back to me, because it's set up for me, yeah? The third part of this trust is what's called a trustee, and this is what we always hear about. The trustee, basically, is an employee. They are told what to do by this chap here. So this chap's running policy on the benefit of him, so he can sit on his arse on the beach drinking bloody pina coladas now. He works, directs policy, and tells the trustees what to do. The trustees are employees. So just bear in mind there are three, three parts to any trust. It's a three-party contract, that's what it is. The shit end of the stick is always this guy here. Lloyd's TSB, the Trust and Savings Bank, it must be called. Okay, so a trustee is the employee who gets told what to do by this chap for the benefit of this chap, yeah? Just to confuse it even more, I'm the beneficiary, I'm just going to put Benny, I'm Benny. I can decide, out of that trust, those three positions, I can decide to administrate my own trust, be my own executor. So I decide, I sack the block off into a crap job, I'll do it myself. So now I can run the policy of that trust. So I am both the beneficiary and the executor. So there's only one part left, and that's back to trustee. Yeah? That's the employee. The public servants. Yeah, exactly. The trustee can only ever hold one position at any one time. Like I say, it's the shithead of the stick, it's the employee, it's the shelf stacker at Tesco who gets told what to do. You cannot be a trustee at any of those two other positions. You can only ever be at any one time a trustee. Okay, so bear in mind those positions, but you can be both of those, yeah? Or you can be separate to those. But that is on its own, that's all it is. Okay, legal presumption, we go to court, I get a demand. Let's say, in fact, I've got one going on now. We tried to lock me up for six months for driving whilst disqualified. It's gone to court a few times, I've been arrested a few times. I've done this trust stuff. Um, I took seven witnesses with me. And a month later, they arrested me from my house as a no-show at court. At court, sorry. I locked up for just under three days. They handcuffed me, dragged me into magistrate's court, and now it's adjourned. And then I met you the day after, which is why I turned up like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I could do it. I just got out that tea time just before I met you. So what did they do? I still beat me in court. Nobody held me back. They couldn't think of anything else to do. Um, so what they did is they made it as a no-show. So, uh, I can't remember who I was talking to. I'm going to tell you how I've resolved that now. Um, they want me to go back on October the 9th. I've adjourned the first one, which were about eight weeks ago. They want now me to go back into Magistrates Court and they want to lock me up for six months for a driving offence. You can't be disqualified for driving, by the way. If I've got time, I'll explain that. It's not such thing. So they want to lock me up for six months for a driving offence. Now I know people have committed crimes in that last six months. They want to teach me a lesson. So I've figured a way how to stop them doing it, which I'll explain in a bit. So going back to this, what happens? You go to court. Imagine I haven't figured out a way, uh, and I just go to court. Legal presumption, throw that out. I get a demand. You, you must come. You get a summons. You go to court, don't you? It's an invitation. But we're not supposed to know that. I turn up at court. If the fishing expedition's worked, somebody's bit, I've turned up in court. 
What happens when you get to court? Legal presumption. I walk into court. What happens? So remember, this is, this works for anything, but this is a driving, some sort of driving offence. It's always the crown, the crown against Mr. Robert Freeman or Robert Freeman in what county? It's actually the police in my county, but representing the crown. Yeah. I get took to court. What happens? The three positions I told you about: beneficiary, executive, trustee. You go to court. This presumption, they know it's a trust, but they won't tell you it's a trust. What happens is, the judge or magistrate, he's there to administer that court hearing, isn't he? They're taking me to court. I'm the defendant, notice, straight away I'm in, a, I'm in a position I have to defend. Why am I defending anything? I've got to defend. If I stand forward in their jurisdiction, I've got to plead. Pleading means to beg. Why am I begging? Okay, so straight away I'm on back foot. So what happens is legal presumption, the judge and the magistrate, this is why I said, they're not doing anything wrong. Because we don't know about this trust we're not supposed to, the judge and magistrate automatically volunteer to administer the trust that is Rob Freeman. The judge and magistrate become the executor. Executive the son taught. Wow, brilliant. Sometimes called administrator. In administrative pr proceedings, executive did the song tour, I come to that nice one The judge has a, a responsibility in a way to come forward and administer the proceedings of this. I walk in, I ain't got a clue, what's your name, Rob Freeman, what's your address, what's your date of birth, which I don't give them because I've got it. Your address, stand there, take your hat off, which I never do. Come and stand there, the invisible ball line, I'm now in the dock. Uh, how do you plead, how do you beg? I don't beg, I don't plead. You can't move forward, by the way, if you don't move. I'll tell you about that in a bit. They stump me, they don't know what to do. Apart from him throwing his bucket, we don't know what to do. You can't move forward if you don't move, if you don't beg. So, what, uh, what am I? I'm being told what to do. I'm volunteering. It's all voluntary. They sent me a summons. Their legal definition of a summons is an invitation. They've invited me to go along to a trustees meeting. He's directing policy of this trust, this trustee's meeting. Nobody else is doing it. He's got an obligation to do it. So if I'm the trustee, he's the executive administrator. What about this muppet who's taking him to court to say, he's taking him to court to say I'm driving whilst he's qualified. Believe it or not, he becomes the beneficiary. What? He becomes the beneficiary. Sorry. <laughs> He's putting demands on me and he becomes a beneficiary of this trust. Why? Because he wants some equity that I own. Whoever whoever's the beneficiary has got the equity of the trust, he own everything in it. He wants some of my equity. It's a benefit for him to take my equity off me. Now remember you can only be trustee at any one time. That's me. I've walked in, I've got told what to do, I'm like that, I don't know what to do, stand there, I'm stood there. No matter what, no matter what, the magistrates court have a 97% conviction rate, they agree with the corporations 97% of the time, they always agree with the corporations. We lose 97% of the time. That other 3% is just to give the illusion of justice. There is no justice. That's why it's called summary justice. Summary, they've made the mind before we walk in. Just us. Right? Just us. Just us. Hey, it's there. Find something out. Oh, man, I don't know if I've got time to tell you, but I'll tell you in a bit. Justice, right? I'll give you a clue. It's just ice. As in. I'll tell you a thing off. I'm getting really excited about this. <laughs> so at some point, oh, I'm going off topic, but sorry, I've got to tell you, because I've only found out two days ago, I've got nobody else to tell. And the dog's sick of me telling me, and the kids are sick of me. At some point, the scales of justice were all about, not justice, salt. Right? Salt. And at some point, less than 200 years ago, when freezers were invented, salt had a, a value that's now changed to ice, which is why it's the Ministry of Just Ice. Which is why we enter Water World, because it's ice, not a lot of water. Sorry. Does anybody know where I am? No, no, no. So, executor steps forward. Always have got the executor's job, administrator for one. Get maximum benefit for the beneficiary. How can I possibly win? I'm a trustee. 
he's going to kick your horse, find me all up, okay. So I go in court, I recognise this. So what do I do? I recognise it's a trust, I tell him it's a trust. Rob Freeman is my trust estate. Anything held in trust, nobody can take it off you. Nobody can touch you. That's why it's safe. Is this as you is this as you go in? This is at that all. Um, as, as I walk in, the usher uh, tells I'm me I'm not in legal rights then. No, I've got so. Yeah, no, that's right. well, well, well. At the same stage as you go in. Okay, I give me an to usher because I'm not frightened with the name anymore. I didn't used to know this. She tells me I'm ready. We walk in. The doc's there. She says, well, I'm sorry, the doc's there or whatever. She says, well, you stand over there and I'll wander off. I've got people in public gallery. I walk, I walk up to the front of the court before magistrates come out, and I'll Paris is looking at me, and I pour drinks and I hand them around to everybody. I won't take my hat off, because any time, any people in, in don't let them take your hat off, don't give them anything. It's you give it into jurisdiction. When the, magist when the magistrates come, come in, I sit down and everybody stands up. So you never even enter that dock, which they lock you in it, by the way. I entered the dock last time because I tried to get it adjourned, but I walked back out of it. And they kept saying, can you come a bit further up? And I See, when they got me, they had me in full security, flipping coded, flipping locked, locked glass door, flipping... Well, that's what they did last time when they yeah. arrested me and put me on prisoner's bus. I didn't have a but choice. they knew I was taking it from a female point of view. Yeah. Like, but now, do you know now, I've got really standing go, they can call me what they want, they can... I'll stand where I'll stand. Have you said anything at that stage as you're going into the dock? Are you challenged them Anyway, well, I'm already challenging them by uh, can you not take taking your hat off. Can yeah. you take your hat off, please? No, they come with contempt of court, then. Well, well, I'm going to come to that. This is how they finished off. Can That's you take your hat I off? Up in you can't get locked up. I know that. Yeah. You can't but get hat off. Know that. Why. Uh, can you take your hat off? Uh, no, sorry. Why not? It's from the religion. Well, what religion are you? I said, well, it's not none of your business. Well, actually, I'm a Chirikua Apache. I, which I, I'm not, but I like Apaches, and I have to wear a headdress uh, for every formal meeting. But you can see what. <laughs> so can you can you walk a little bit further forward, please? I was going to say I was a pirate. You say what you want, can't you? Well, um, south the chip. Invisible bar line, sorry. Invisible bar line's there. I'm outside their jurisdiction. I know it's a ship. I know it's a church. I know it's a trustees meeting. Uh, Mr. Freeman, normally. Oh, I'm not Mr. Freeman. Talk to me. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Freeman. Can you just walk a little bit further forward? We can't quite hear. I said, okay. And then I'll come pick my papers up. So everything they tell me, I do the opposite. Okay, so I wait for the clerk to the justices, is the person that sits in front of the three magistrates. It's usually magistrates' court. I'm, trying, I'm not trying to rush, but I'm trying to get to it. They're the legal experts. The magistrates have no legal training whatsoever. They are lay people like us, they don't know a thing. Um, so the clerk to the justices is the one that really calls the shots who's the expert that advises the magistrates. Clerk to the justices, how do you plead, Mr. Freeman? What? Sorry? I'm pouring water and waiting to be made, so. And I have to take this, and I do it on purpose, and I'm not trying to be clever. I'm trying to not contract with them absolutely whatsoever. How do you plead? I said, well, what do you mean I do I plead? How do you plead? Well, I don't fucking plead anything. Because pleading's begging. I don't even want to be here. I got threatened that if I, did, if I didn't come in, arrest me. In fact, I said good morning to him. I said, in fact, what am I doing here? What do you want from me? And they're like, what's this? Uh, well, this is how it works. This is clear to the justices. This is how it works, Mr. Freeman. You have to plead guilty or not guilty. Uh, you have to plead guilty or not guilty, and then we can move on. I know we can't move on. Well, so, hold on a minute. Yeah. Hey? Prove it. I have to. I have really? to. Really? Prove really? It. It's consent. So I say to him, well, where's. What am I doing here? Are you claiming this something I can or can't do? Because I've got no evidence in front of me. What are you claiming I can or can't do? Well, you have to plead first. You've been charged with wrong. Listen, I'm not pleading anything today. I've got no facts in front of me. It, this, and then I drop it in. This is a trustees meeting. What am I even doing here? I don't understand. If, again, if you don't understand, the, you're inferring that you, you're not bowing down to their jurisdiction because you don't understand. You don't stand under there. I don't use that anymore, Tim. I'll tell you why. It used to be I don't stand under. That's what I don't know if everyone's aware. When a police or policeman or a judge says, Do you understand? He means, Do you stand under me? Do you agree? Do you consent to me having authority? And I used to say, No, I don't stand under. 
I don't do that now. I just say, no, I don't assume liability. Boom, that's it, done. I'll never ask you again. Right. Standing under is assuming liability. Just, just clear, I don't understand. I don't, work, so I don't assume liability. I don't assume liability. Okay. That's it. Not, I don't understand. Not, I don't right. agree. Because everything's done on presumption. Do you stand under? Do you presumption and assumption? Do you assume liability? Is what they're really asking. Some of them know, some of them. I don't assume liability now. So, when do we get to it? They can't do anything with me, can they? So, I drop it in, I say, look, it's a trustees meeting, what the hell am I doing here? I say, correct me if I'm wrong. Is this not a trustees meeting? You might, I just come out with it now. I used to pounce about a bit, but I just come out with it now. They're either going to lock me up or, or let me go, aren't they? They look at each other, uh, they never say it's a court of law, have you noticed? They never call it a court of law. They call it a court, don't they? You don't call it a court of law, because it isn't a court of law. It's an administrative court. It's an administrative court. Yeah. Court de facto. Yeah, exactly. That's no, there's no jury, it's not a court of jury, is it? Yeah. So, I then say, hang on a minute, I say to them, I've just realised what's happening, sorry, hold everything, I'm taking over here, they're all looking at me like I've just killed Kenny or something, don't I? No. <laughs> so I've, took over, I've took over now, I'm thinking, I haven't come across this before, not in my town, nobody's done this. I say, whoa, stop, stop everything, stop, stop. And it ushers like that, and I can see them dying to get on the phone to security, and I say, I've just realised what's happening, I am, because I know what's happening. Whoa, it's a trustees meeting, sorry, sorry, that's what I'm doing here. Right, excuse me, Mr. Magistrates, did you swear an oath, by the way? Well, yeah, don't ask me if I'm on the oath. I know they swore an oath, I just wanted to admit it. Right, so you are then public servants, right, okay, sorry, yeah. You're the trustees. Okay. Rob Freeman, it's my trust. All right, guys, I've said to him, it's my trust. I'm the beneficiary of that trust. If I'm wrong, correct me. I'm ready to go down. They're looking at the, they're looking at the legal um, advisor, the clerk. It was a woman on the last one. She's, she's looking for papers to rebook what I've just said. You all swore an oath, did you not? Okay, you public servants, right. Okay, so you're trustees of my trust. Whoa, they look at me. How the hell does he know that? This trust was set up for me. That makes me the beneficiary, because it's not. No comment, no arguing back. Head's getting lower and lower. Clerk's mm -hmm. getting a bit more twitchy. She's thinking, shit, what should I do? <laughs> okay, I say, well, I, I've shown up here as, uh, I am the executor, but I'm actually showing up here today as the general executor of Robert Freeman Trust. Boom, as soon as they hear the word executor. And now that what happens is, all I'm doing is, it took a rig, I think. Sorry? You took the judge out. I have took him out. I've rearranged the positions to what should be. They're working on legal presumption that I don't know, so I act like a trustee. So all I've done is rearrange the positions. Now, what's happened now? And this is quite important. Well, Freeman is now what? I'm right and sure. I've told him I'm the beneficiary. If I'm wrong, correct me, they can't. I've now took over the general administration. So I'm the general executive. Remember I said you can be those two positions, and you can't be all three, and you can't be anything else but that. Swore, you swore an oath. A public, you're a public servant, which makes you a servant serves and gets told what to do. You have now become, I'm now appointing you in your proper position of trustee. Now remember these positions. The general executor tells the trustee what to do on behalf of the beneficiary. I'm both these people. You want to leave one position, the magistrates have now become trustees. Say to the clerk again, correct me if I'm wrong, show evidence now that I'm wrong. They can't. She's now sliding down in the chair thinking, damn. Oh, well, run a minute. The Crown against Robert Freeman, the police, CPS. Bullshit. They were the beneficiary originally, if you remember. What's happened? Where do they fit in? I said to him, who the hell are you? What? I don't recognise you. what you're doing here. Who are you? Uh, well, well, I, I'm uh, PC Sonsa, or I'm bloody Mary Bonham from CPS. I said, oh, right, so you're from CPS? Yeah, or you're a police officer. If you're a police officer, you also swore an oath, which makes you a public servant, which makes you another <laughs> trustee. Well, I'm from CPS, so I'm, I'm so and so. Well, hang on a minute. That, says, that does say trustee, you know. 
That's Italian for trust me, right? It is Paul, isn't it? That's Italian for trust me. Okay. So hang on a minute. You can have, you can have loads of... By the way, let me explain it. You can have more than one trustee. There can be many trustees. Uh, as in... Like Tesco again, employees are trustees. That says trust. So now I've relegated the Crown and the judicial people back to being... The judicial effect. Back to being trustees. Hold on a minute. They all work for government. They're also performing a function of government. The very fact that there's a court case with magistrates, they're going down a legal system. Anybody employing a legal system is performing a function of government. If you're performing a function of government, they both work for that person. A government is a corporation and the same as a person, legally speaking. So I'm going to No wonder we get shafted in court. Not only is, is it the trust switch round, what about the conflict of interest here? The judge and magistrates, whoever they are, and the people prosecuting you wanting the benefits, are all working for the same people. Hang on a minute, what the hell chance have we ever got? This is why Roger Hayes gets locked up. This is why Robert Green locked up. This is why you cannot win in court. It's why you can't use lawful against legal, because You've got two different masks on the same face. You've got a corporation. Legally speaking, that is one person. They're all in it together. You get away from the corruption because it's trust law. They break. Remember I said they're not doing anything wrong? They're not doing anything wrong. These chaps here are not... They're stepping forward to administer the policy because nobody else is doing it. And it's as simple as telling them just to fuck off. Excuse me. I get wound up because I've got a court case coming up. It's as simple as saying, oi, you're a trustee, you're a trustee, that's my trust, I'm the beneficiary, I'm appointed general executor, now piss off and leave me alone. What I've learned to do now is, I'm now charging these people for my time. I'm charging these, I've got to put a bill in for five grand when I appear in court, for one day. I've got to send them a schedule of my charges. Now, imagine... Imagine Richard Branson being called to an employees meeting, being demanded that he comes, and he has to, he stands there, Richard Branson walks into Virgin to an employees meeting, and they run up and they kick him straight in bollocks. That's what's happening in court every single time. What would Richard Branson do? He'd have a fit, wouldn't he? Then people would pay for that, wouldn't they? Okay, so we've relegated them back to where they are, trustees. If they act now, the sole purpose of a trustee, remember, is to do exactly what the general executive of the trust tells him to do on behalf of the beneficiary. Otherwise, they're in breach of trust. As soon as you mention breach of trust to these people, they pull the pants because they are then instantly liable. No more hiding behind the limited liability corporation. They are personally liable for breach of trust. So that's what I tell them and that's why I'm billing them. I'm billing them if so what I said to him is, um, the last time I was in there, sorry, I've got a bit of sweat on. I ordered him, I ordered him as the general executor of the trust, should I be over here, Alex? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> the technical notice of that? Well, the because you didn't have warranty court on that. It goes beyond, I've got to tell you, trust law is the highest form of law. Yeah. We've got common law, we've got admiralty, we've got, it's all... There's many, many laws. There's contract yeah, law, yeah, statute yeah. law, which is what we're being ruled by, even though we're supposed to be governed by it, is only by consent. It's the lowest form of law. Because, remember I said, a man can't make a, a law on another man. My trust was given by God, or my creator. It's, it's my trust between me and God. But you're saying now that you've turned the court into they're the slaves. But I'm going well, to say that they're not going no, to be no. related to this. They're equal to me when they're not related. Like you said. Ah, they're equal to me in their everyday life until they're acting in their capacity as a public official. They're volunteering to become trustees. They've been... They've they contracted to be servants. Exactly. Yeah, so and yeah, by they're consent, saying that, so they gave not their that, consent to be well, servants. They're not they're doing that. No, but nobody's doing they're saying we're there because slaves still. You're right. That's what I'm saying. And they're not going to recognise that, I don't think. They've got no choice. Well, you're saying they've got no choice, but they'll just change something. They can't. How can anybody get between you and God? 
It can't be done. It's impossible. And I know it's impossible because I ordered them to dismiss all charges. Yeah. Um, if it gets overwhelming, they'll change it. You can't change it. You can't change it. I'm living proof. I'm studying now. I know you are, yeah. I'm living proof. But you are, but if we all challenged it, they'll definitely change it. No, they can't change it. Whether they're going to go to the highest level or the lowest level, they can't change it. Yeah, they can change it. No, they can't. Because they're going to go to the highest level or the lowest level, they can't change it. No, they can't. Because they're going to go to the highest level or the lowest level, they can't change it. No, they can't. Because they're going to go to the highest level or the lowest level, they can't change it. No, they can't. Because they're going to go to the highest level or the lowest level, they can't change it. No, they can't. Because they're going to go to the highest level or the lowest level, they can't change it. No, they can't. Because they're going to go to the highest level or the lowest level, they can't change it. No, they can't. Because they're going to go to the highest level or the lowest level, they can't change it. No, they can't. Because they're going to go to the highest level but that's if we'll, if we'll do, if we'll do it, then you've got no choice. We'll do it as a class action as well. That's going to be bloody hell, isn't it? No, it's not. You imagine a thousand people all filing our papers on the same day, taking out the yeah. spike. Yeah. A thousand people yeah. doing it all at once. Yeah. If we don't do it... The populace, yeah. If we don't do it, all that's going to happen. Well, the only thing they could do to beat this is to march stormtroopers down, kick his door in and drag us off to camps. Mm -hmm. Which is, if we leave it, it's what's going to happen anyway, isn't it? And I think oh, we've got right. about... To be honest, I'll be looking if we've got two years. I've got a sweater, haven't I? Yeah. I'll be looking if we've got two years. I think we've got 18 months to two years to get off his arses, which we are doing, thankfully. But the rest of them, we've got to get off his arses and we've got to find a way of fighting back. And I know it cannot be beaten other than physical violence. Because we're not consenting, we're not tricking into co being tricked into consent. We're putting them back in their positions that they volunteered to be. Now, what are we doing wrong? I'm mirroring back what the Vatican have done to us, which I'll probably not get time, uh, time to explain. So, dismiss all charges, I forgot to tell you, I go in court. I say to them, right, every court, magistrate's court don't keep records. You don't see that woman typing there. If anyone's, has anyone been to magistrate's court? No, that's fair. Yeah. She's a woman typed, is it stenographer? She's supposed to keep a copy. Now, in Crown Court for a proper crime, sorry, a proper crime, there is a recording. Magistrate's court, nobody keeps a recording. What it is is, I used to ask the judge or magistrate, um, is this all on record or for and on the record? And they accept it. The reason they accept it is, it's a trustees meeting. That's all it is. It's an employee meeting. So they have a record of a trustees meeting. It's not, it doesn't go anywhere. They can alter it. Anyone, has anyone ever had a transcript from a court case, a civil court case, a magistrate's court? If you ever get one, you have to pay for it, they charge you for it. It's never what happened, they change things around. And the reason is they're doing nothing wrong, it's an employees meeting. So the first thing I ask before I even speak, and I forgot to tell you, is, is everything that happens right here a matter of public record? Now, public record is a big difference from is everything on the record. When you go down to a police station and they're charging you or they're interrogating you, it's on record, get it on public record. What that means is, I say to them now, I'm convening a court of public records today. Boom. They look at each other, what, what's he on about? That's straight away, is it? Straight away, as soon as I walk in before I even mention trust. That's what we've got, it's spot on, isn't it? It's not hard, it's just, it's just a yeah. section you follow. Um, I'm convening a court of public record. I've got, last time I took seven witnesses with me, I turn round and I say, in front of witnesses, boom, they sit upright, shit. From that moment on, everything that happens is a matter of public record. The reason I do it is, um, they shafted me, didn't they? I walked out of court, I dismissed all charges, and I said, strike it from your private records. But what I didn't do, and I've just learned to do, is I'm now going to put a bill in for my time. They've invited me down to court, threatened to lock me up, pretend court, it's my trust. They've dragged me down there virtually, or if not, they come and get me. They've abused the trust, they've called me a trustee, they threatened me to give this chap benefits who's a trustee, that's a that's breach of trust. Worse, I've got to pay something out of my equity of my trust. We'll get locked away. So now I go down with a bill for my time. Richard Branson had bill of money. He'd bill about 20 million if he got stood in, he got 50 more 20. So I bill him five, ten thousand pounds for that day. Okay. Have you ever, uh, just a quick one, have you ever threatened them with uh when they don't, when they don't do what they're supposed to do, basically, if you threaten them with uh, malfeasance of public duty, which is subject to 25 years jail time, so if they, if they don't, if they don't acknowledge, if the trustee doesn't do what the general executor says, then they are guilty of malfeasance of public duty, which is, which is subject to 25 years jail time. They will think you've got that. to rearrange the trust uh, relationship first. If you accuse oh, no, them of that, yeah, yeah, it doesn't sure. count because. 
Because you're not yet. Yeah, yeah, I'm to be a trustee. Sure. Trustee, they can do anything. So nice one. Yeah. yeah. So I've not sent the billing yet because it's not come back up. So dismissed everything. I dismissed the whole thing. Uh, you're you're a trustee. You're a trustee. Now you do as I tell you. And I walk out. And I'll be. Uh, I'll take seven witnesses. So they can't jump on me. It's the first time I ever used trust. It's the first time they never called security on me. Using the Freeman stuff, five times out of five they called security on me. Because I was using this lawful legal stuff. And I turned around and there's two security men next to me. And I said to them, touch me, it's common law also. Touch me, I'll hit you. Which I would, I'd defend myself. I don't allow anyone to touch my skin. They can call me every name, racist name, but I don't care. But they touch my skin without my permission. It's concerned me, it's trust again. And they both went, don't worry, we're not coming near you. Um, but as soon as I used the trust the first time, no security, I walked out clear as anything. And every time I've used the trust, never have they found security. So it must be working. So, recap, time. dismiss everything, dismiss all charges, strike it from your private record. I've not put my bill in, but next time I'm putting my bill in, I walk out. As I reach the door, the, the woman, and I've invited them at every stage, if I'm wrong, show me evidence now. Um, I got pulled for a driving thing. I say, show me evidence that I was performing a function of government when I was arrested. If you're not performing a function of government, um, you... I can explain it. If you're, not, if you're doing your everyday job... You're not getting, duty. Sorry? Okay, these people, these people are performing a function of government. Anything legal is performing a function of government. If you go to work for a wage, using your national insurance number, getting paid for it, you're performing a function of government. At any stage you're performing a function of government, you're actually a trustee. Now, I did a talk on, funny enough, I did a talk on trust, and I got arrested just after it, and I got pulled, just to talk about trust. And that's when I got pulled. So I say to him in court, provide evidence that I was performing a function of government, when you're only ever liable when you're a trustee performing a function of government. Otherwise, you're not liable. So I said, provide, provide evidence that I never, I've sent my national insurance number back. I've sent my driving license back. I've sent everything apart from the birth certificate back. I don't want to be part of their corporation. I don't want anything to do with it. I live my own life. And so I'm never performing a function of government. So I'm never liable. And I'm never a trustee. So provide evidence that I was performing a function of government when I was stopped. Show me a payroll number. Um, how much did I get paid? If I'm not getting paid and I'm not working for the government at that time, then I'm not liable for any of their statute laws. Um, show me a statute law that says I have to work for a corporation. In fact, Universal Declaration of Human Rights, if you're forced to join an association, it's a form of slavery. So are they saying that I've got to be a trustee working for these people, having a national insurance number, they're forcing me to join an association, but it's a form of slavery. Not the Human Rights Act, that's a statute, the Universal Declaration of Human Rights. So I say to him, are you saying that I'm a slave and you're forcing me into slavery to join your association, to join your corporation? Um, you try to get me disqualified, disqualified from driving. I said, do I even need a license to drive? Before it were driving, it's commerce, or don't do it. I don't care. I'm me, with the full commercial liability. Call me that, call me a driver, I don't care. Do I even need a license to drive? What's a license? It's permission. Hang on a minute. You, you're giving me permission to Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Free right to travel. Nobody can stop you from travelling. No one's got the right. Why do I need a license to drive? Well, well, you need one. Why? Uh, what's a license? It's permission. Hang on a minute. Government can only give you permission to do lawful things. They can't give you permission to go and kill someone. So hang on. Why am I seeking permission to do something that's lawful? If it's lawful, why am I seeking permission? I'll just go ahead and do it. Do you see where I'm coming from? So I send my license back. So I'm disqualified for driving. Disqualified. Am I going too fast? Disqualified. Black's Law Dictionary. I've got nine, nine Black's Law Dictionaries and about another six. I've got about 15 Law Dictionaries. And I scan them because it is a good read. It makes you laugh. It's key. It's like a comedy, that makes me laugh. So, disqualified means, what does disqualified mean? Said it in court, what does disqualified mean? Well, it means you can't drive. No, it doesn't. What, what definition of disqualified are you using? Here's Black's Law Dictionary. Um, to disqualify, according to Black's 
Black Swan Man's edition. Sorry, I'm not blocking it. To make illegible, ineligible. To make ineligible. Look up ineligible. Um, cannot hold public office. That's what disqualified means. Hang on a minute. So you, you're preventing me from holding public office. You're making it ineligible. You're making it ineligible for me to hold public office to work and be a representative of a government agent. Well, that's exactly what I fucking want. I don't want to do all that. So thanks a lot. You've just proved my point. You don't want any of it. Thanks a lot. Cheers. Power to you. You've just told me that you. You are stopping me from representing and being a government agent. Well, thank you very much. I'm then not liable to anybody, so cheers, see you. Right, next time I'm sending a billing. So what happened is four weeks later after all this, oh, as I got to the door, this is the last court case, the clerk to the justice's woman, she was about, like this now, she was almost on the floor, she was chest of beating like that. As I walked to the door, she jumped up and went, we'll get you for contempt of court. And I just stopped at the door and I thought, because whenever they said that, they haven't got a clue. They're clutching at the smallest straws you've ever seen. Now, she expected me to shit myself. Now, as soon as I stopped, stopped, and I'm like, oh, brilliant. I said, well, this is what you should have used. I didn't know. I know. What are you doing now? I'll explain it to you. Contempt of court is a, is a common law misdemeanor. Remember, we're in a statute court. We're not, we're in a trust court. Contempt of court is a common law misdemeanor. I said to him, thank you very much. Contempt of court is a common law misdemeanor, which means it has to go to a court de jour. It has to go to a court with a jury. I said, if you're accusing me of that, brilliant, bring it on. We'll go to Crown Court, we'll have, we'll have a jury, and I'll tell them all about this trust relationship. So they can't do anything, they cannot arrest What's you. What's that held in contempt? It doesn't matter, contempt of court is it? Somebody it's a, says there's a different kind of held in the, the, the contempt of court they were trying to get me on would have been a lesser sentence than the, the, the disqualified driving. It carries a six month sentence. So they're offering me something less, aren't they? They're offering me contempt of court, so she's putting the straws. You can't, I'll not get six months of contempt of court because I'm not aware that I'm being in contempt, am I? Right. Every crime's got you two can't parts. Have it in court anyway, can't exactly. It? Every crime's got two parts. The act of say I'm licking that, but it's got another part that they don't tell you about called mens rea or mens rea. Mens rea is a guilty mind. It's knowing that you're doing something wrong. If you don't know that you're doing something wrong, but you still do an act, if you don't know it's a crime, you, you cannot get in trouble in court. You can never get locked up. So I don't know I'm, I'm in contempt of court. You can't prove men's ray, but it has to go to a common law court anyway. I have to hold 12, a 12 man jury or a woman jury all about the trust. So they were clutching at straws. So, cut a long story short, I hear nothing. And then four weeks later, on a Saturday morning, expecting me off here, two very, very young policemen um, knock on my window on the street. They then come, I've got a general with big gates and then and I'm around back in my house. You can't get, I haven't got a door on the street. You cannot get to my house unless you come through six and a half foot gates. And I've got two windows like those on the street, that's all I've got. One Saturday morning, little knock. I've got notices up in my windows that if anybody comes to my house without my express written permission first, I charge them just under £5,000. And now even postman, went outside, man, what screws like that and runs off. <laughs> nobody comes to my house. My brother and my two mates, and nobody, could, nobody dare come to my house. If somebody wanders on by mistake, one bailiff like two years ago, the council tax came, I said, uh, did you read the notices? He went, uh, yeah. He said, well, I didn't understand them. I said, well, go back and read them. So he come back, he said, yeah, I understand it now. I said, right, I've got 10 seconds to get off my property, or I'll take your name, take you to court, cost me 35 quid to take you to court, you have to give me 5,000. He made great big strides and went. And so nobody dare come to me now. So, after this court case, four weeks later, a little tap on my window, open curtains, two you very young policemen said, can we come down your general, please? I said, oh, all right, I'm going, man. So they come down and they stood at gates. And they went, uh, uh, Rob Freeman? And I went, well, am I obliged to even talk to you? What, what do you want? And they went, one of them went, well, it looks like him, doesn't it? To his mate. They were really young, these people, these two uh, chaps, and they said, We've got a warrant for your arrest, we've ever so sorry. Well, I, what? I said, what for? And they said, well, it looks like you, so we're presuming it's you, so a legal presumption. They said, well, we've got a warrant for you not showing up at court last time. I went, you what? I said, I took seven witnesses with me, I was there. Well, this is all we've got to go on. He says, but don't worry, 
He says, we'll get you in Saturday call. I went to Saturday call. He says, yeah, he says, uh, I had my kids, but luckily my ex missus were there, otherwise I'd have been stuck with on my own with kids. He said, yeah, you'll be in and out here. We'll take you straight to court uh, and we'll clear this um, this mistake up. Never read me my rights, never searched me, never nothing. I said, what happens if I just tell you to go away? He says, oh, we'll have to call for backup then and we'll have to break in. So I thought, well, I don't want to scare kids. He says, well, you'll be back in two hours. So the uh, I walk along to a big, big van, I'm locked in the back of there as usual, no cuffs. No search, no nothing. Straight to the cop shop. Yeah, he says, we won't be long. He says, Rob, uh, he says, you'll be in and out. He says, we'll just put you in at the police station, straight to the magistrate's court. Boom, an hour and a half later, less. We'll get you sorted and back with kids. So as I walk into the police station from back end, desk sergeant is now, I think he wants, he's on first name teams, but he loves me. He loves me and hates me. I think he wants to dance with me, actually, because he keeps patting me a lot. If he wants to do a bit of that. And as soon as I walk in, he goes, oh, it's him. He's seen me 15 times now and never got anything on me. Um, as soon as I walk in, he says, he says, has he given you a name to these two? And he said, oh yeah, yeah, because I don't know what to do now. So it's really just reasonable to do, man. He says, uh, there's no court today, there's no court on Saturday, points and all that. He says, you'll have to stay until Monday morning. I went, shit. The two policemen looked at each other and they looked at me and they generally didn't know. So they used very naive ways. So now I'm, I'm there for longer, aren't I? So I'm in till Monday morning. Long, long shift in work. This is just before I met you, Paul, and you, Alex. So I'm in there 48 hours. I'm trying not to eat or drink anything. Uh, I'm forced to printed. I'm cuffed now and all sorts. That's right. Yeah, sorry. Oh, no, no, sorry, sorry, so I'm getting mixed up. I'm not cuffed. I'm not forced to printed. Sorry. That happened the first time I got arrested. So I'm in, I'm in, sorry, I've been arrested how many times I've been in this stuff. So last time, I'm in, I'm in custody for 48 hours, they're all really pleasant with me. Last time, they were banging me cell every hour to wake me up and they were forced finger to me and cuffing me and then re-arresting me. This time, ever so nice, am I in the shop now? <coughs> oh God, I'm still over there, aren't I? Uh, Edison and I, do you want a cup of tea, do you want a cup of coffee, do you want to use the exercise yard? And I only got one. What about that bit? We'll pick it up in Ireland after now. Um, Edison and I, Monday morning comes, boom, I'm on prison bus, cuffed, with, what's that security firm called? G4. Um, G4. Israeli Mossad. That's the one. I couldn't think of it for a minute. Yeah. So I'm there with Israeli Mossad G4 security women. I'm cuffed, I'm dragged down to a bus with all the prisoners. I'm there with pimps, drug dealers, murderers and lot. I'm there. So I'm driving spouse is qualified. These were, because we're all chatting about it. Well, I'm in for this, I'm in for it. And one of them says, who's going to go home today? And I went, me. I went, how do you know? He said, it's a driving offence. He went, not a nice one. Anyway, I'm then kept in a holding cell at Magistrates Court, under lock and key, for till three o'clock from nine o'clock in the morning. Maybe half three. I'm the last one they deal with, so they're teaching me a lesson. I'm under a lock and key, they drag me into the magistrate's court. Now I can't do the trust thing. So hang on. They are ignoring the trust, but they're not. What they've done is, they've ignored it as if it doesn't exist. And to frighten me into consenting, which I didn't do. I didn't, cons I didn't consent to anything. They've agreed to bail me to bring me back. I just wanted to get out nearly three days, and I would up to eat. I went knackered. I wanted to get out. So I accepted the bail. I didn't sign anything. So what I've, I've realised now is that I had to get out, otherwise they just kept me locked up again. And they could have given me six months there and then, I was going to look after the kids. So I'm out. I'm, I'm bailed to go back. I adjourned that one. And now I'm bailed to go back on October the 9th. They would expect me to go in under their jurisdiction. If I use trust again, if I use trust again, it should work. But I found out this is what I'm in the process of doing. Because they abuse the trust, I'm now taking the police, the magistrates involved, and everybody else to a higher court. Now, there's a, there's a court, it's called the High Court, and it's split into three divisions. I think it's Chancery, Family Court, and something called the Queen's Bench Division. Now, I don't know anybody in this country who's done this. I can't believe Roger Hayes has not done it. I'm doing it. I've done the paperwork. In fact, it goes off tomorrow. Before they can act on me on October the 9th, I'm going to try and get it into Queen's Bench Division. And what it is, is it's a section, a section of the High Court that deals with public servants 
public trustees behaviour. Now, unlawful warrant saying I didn't show. Sorry, invalid warrant that I never got to saw. Unlawful arrest, breach of trust. That what you said. And, and if you have a higher court, it cost me 35 quid to take to court. I'm now putting my bills in, but the beauty is, if you involve the police, you automatically have a common law jury. So I'm now taking them. I'm hoping to get the October 9th adjourned, because how can they act on me when it's been taken to a higher court? So it should get adjourned now. Instead of me being the defendant, like I normally am, they're attacking me. I'm now at a higher court with a jury as a plaintiff. Now they're the defendant. I've got a bill I'm going to send in, and I get to tell a 12 person jury all about this. And what are you going as a private prosecution? No, I'm just going under proper person, it's called, in the proper person. I've just asked, asked somebody today, and they said the CPS can take over a private prosecution. Nobody can take over my trust. I'm going right. as the beneficiary and general right. editor yeah. of my trust in proper person, which is Latin for. So they can't me. even jump in. They can't do anything. It's not in the public interest. I'm taking them to court. Yeah, I um, under something called original jurisdiction. I used to go into court with inerrant natural rights, forget that. Under original jurisdiction. They can't touch it, nobody can touch it, it ties into this. So that's where I'm at. Every time I've used the trust, the only action that I've ever, the only comeback I've ever had is them having an unlawful arrest for an invalid warrant. They've got no paperwork. Now, they've now got to submit every piece of evidence, which is what I originally wanted. Every piece of paperwork, the onus now is on them to prove that the actions they took, normally I've got to prove, if I'm, taking, if I'm, if I'm accusing someone, normally the onus is on me to prove that they've done something. It's supposed to be habeas corpus, innocent or proven guilty. The burden of proof is for me to prove. Excuse me. In this case, I'm now taking them to court for their previous actions. They've now got to provide evidence and proof that their actions previously were justified and lawful, not legal, lawful. They're not going to be able to do it. So what I think they're going to do is they're going to drop their side. I mean, How do you know? They won't fraudulently do it. They won't fraudulently do it. Because I've only done stuff on me. Because you back the up. good question. I've got the police witness statements from when I was originally arrested, and they've swapped them over. Uh, all police have a. Uh, you know have the notary bill of exchange of rights that you've got. You know you've got to get that with three men's signatures. What will be your affidavit? You know you know you have to get that from a private prosecution. Have you used your own? Are you using your own? Yeah, but I was told either you've got to... It's free man stuff. It is good, I've tried it. Yeah. Some of it works, some of it do not You can get a notarizer, can't you? Yeah, well, you're good before that because you won't do it now. Don't, so, don't. All I'm saying is that... Don't, use their, don't use their paperwork. Never use, use your own. It's my trust. I'm issuing my papers out. I use the, um, the, so high, court, the high court paperwork <laughs> to file the claim. Yeah. But any notification from there on is my paperwork. They're answering to my people. How do you register it with anyone? You don't register it. In a notice of distress, what do you put on? I don't put anything. It's first time. You just the write to them as a normal letter. Well, the High Court will inform them informed. that they are now defendants. Yeah. So I don't have to contact them. I may contact them. Yeah. But what I mean about my paperwork is I'm accusing them. I'm billing them. With an affidavit. Now, yeah, we're well, sworn affidavit. It's the most powerful thing you can have. Yeah, it is. Linked to my trust. Yeah, um, yeah. Can they disprove that they are trustees? Can they prove that what they did previously was lawful? I've got police witness statements to from me. You know, if ever a policeman takes action on you, ask for his notebook. Most important weapon is a copper's got. It's not CS gas or a baton or whatever. It's his notebook. It's the most important thing you can have. And what he asked for is his contemporaneous notebook. And what that means is that he has to make a note of everything that happened at that particular instant, the time, the day, and everything. Now, they're lying about what happened to me. And now I can make him produce his notebook in contemporaneous form, as it was in real time. 
Now, they're very, very strict on notebooks. He's got a gaffer. He can't doctor it to sue. He can't do that. He doesn't know I'm going to ask for that yet. Well, I did that. Two police... But it still went Two policemen court. have swapped them round. Now they've both got to come up with a note. In fact, there's a woman copper as well. She's got to come up and they've all got to fit in. They can't do it because their gaffers look at their notebooks. Their notebooks are everything. So that's another thing I can do. There's many things I can do. Well, I've done that. But the fraudulent has squashed all that. They will, all they will do. They will do. But they won't be me. The court didn't, didn't acknowledge it. It's not court. Well, whoever it was. You yeah. have to make a trust. That's not going to do because you know, they're me, you're putting them back to that position. They, they, they all, you they'll let them up. They'll, they'll, do, they'll just do anything. And like you said with the copy saying it'll be two hours. I've learned the obvious, you please, they're flying tow rags all through the system. Well, they are, aren't they? But the point is. But how you could trust them to say you'll be back in. If one was PC Erford, because he's the one who's committed perj perjury on me. I know we're coming back in two hours. So, but what, 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 what yeah. were the options? Smash me gate and smash me door in an arrest mate. Uh, oh, so we seem to have no recall. There is. I'm telling you this is it. I'm, uh, I'm going to show you this, because when I do with a call, I'm now going to bill them. And I'm going to help them for so, being there's not a lot more to say about this. I know it's difficult for, to get in your head. Um, the trust thing to use as a tool, as a facility for us, is really simple. It's simple to use and they've got no argument. The hard part about it is the concept of actually understanding that it is a trust relationship, not just court, the police, everything. I've used this now with banks, uh, insurances, uh, what else have I used it for? Driving stuff, uh, as in DVLA. It can be used for anything, because everything is a trust relationship, and you are in charge of your trust. Everybody else, if they swore an oath... Set one of the dishes up there, mate. Right, just pause it for a second. Okay. Uh, if they swore an oath, they are public servants, public trustees, but also to remember, if you are doing some sort of job, and you're doing something legal, any sort of job, where you've got a payroll and a national insurance number, <coughs> excuse me, you're performing a function of government, you're also acting as a trustee there. So, Lodge TSB are my trustees. Blah blah insurance are my trustees. It's my trust. Whenever my name is mentioned, it's my trust. I'm the beneficiary, I'm the general executor, everybody else. If you want to get involved, they're my trustees. Remember, general executor calls the shots, directs the policy of that trust specifically for the beneficiary. I can be those two positions. The trustee gets told what to do. Otherwise, you can breach of trust. Can you demand that? No. We do demand it. That's you what you have to demand it. Well, you just appoint them and tell them. Okay. You can sack them if you want, but I prefer to build them. You, you say, nah, I demand that on the executive. You don't have to, you know, we don't demand, you will appoint, you will remind them of their position and your position. Right. So, based on trust is everything, I wanted to cover something that most of us use every day. I've mentioned this on my show, when I had cars. In fact, the brother's just shown me the new uh, logbook, it's called logbook, registration document. Has anybody got those, these new ones, red ones? Have you seen in that big box at front? Have you got them? Oh, sorry. Uh, have you seen that in, uh, from what does it say, John? This is not proof of ownership. This is not proof of ownership. Not proof of ownership. They've changed from blue and green now to red for cars. And because of their pressure from, I think, people like myself, free man stuff early doing, they've changed the format and it says, this is not proof of ownership. So you get a car, don't you? You pay good money for, let's say you don't, you don't buy a fire, so you pay four grand for a car. They tell you to, that you have to register it. I don't know if you're aware, but registry means that you give up the ownership, title ownership of it, and what you get back is a, a user's entitlement. A user's entitlement. So they then send you the paperwork back as the registered keeper. You've handed, the, you've handed it to the king, register Regis. Regis, king. exactly, yeah. yeah. It's where it comes from. Or queen, as it happens yeah. right now. Yeah. But, yeah. So, whenever you register anything, they tell you you have to register it. You're giving up the ownership of it, and what you're getting back is an entitlement, permission, license to use it, provided you abide by their rules. Now, if you don't abide by their rules, and this happened to me twice, I've lost two cars, if you don't tax it, you take it away. Well, hang on a minute. 
I've just paid three grand for a car and they took it away. Is that not theft? It's theft, isn't it? I've paid for it. Well, it's not theft because I've given the ownership to them and I've allowed them to dictate to me when and how I can use that vehicle. The three most possessions, valuable possessions you've ever had in your life, in order, first your children, then your house, then some sort of vehicle, car, motorbike, boat, whatever it is, three most valuable possessions, not saying children are possessions, but they are the most valuable. You have to register all three. That's why social services can take the children away, because you've given up ownership of it, have you not? You've agreed, haven't you? You get a user's entitlement, providing I treat my children how they tell me to treat them, I can keep them. If I do anything out of line, or they think I've done anything out of line, they haven't got to prove it. I've signed up for it, they take them away. I was getting kicked out of my house for this. I beat them on the repossession thing. My house was registered. Take it away. Kick you out. They do it for start as well. They do it to make money, that's what's about. It's about to extract everything off you and they do nothing. Threats. Can you de-register? Brilliant, exactly what I'm coming to. And as far as I know, there's only me in this country who's come up with it and I figured it out by getting arrested time after time, four times for vehicles. Uh, I kept getting wheel clamped outside my house by DVLA for not having tax because what I do is I'm a bugger because I push things to the limit to see what can come back to learn. I got 102 parking tickets in three years. I got, I'm up to 104 now. I never paid one. And people say, oh, you're not. You're just not wanting to pay, but I'm not. I'm trying to get to as far as I can get physically without getting uh, locked on the key thrown away. So the same thing with cars. I chop the clamps off with, um, what they call them? Chainsaws, electric chainsaws, and chucked them away. And then I parked up next street with another car and they clamped me on that. So my mate brought me a petrol driven one. I walked like, you like, is it Jason on Friday 13th? I walked onto the next street and I'm chopping these yellow clamps off. And there's a crowd of 10 people gathered, all with fags on, and they're all applauding me. And I'm like bowing and that, and I thought, brilliant. And I purposely got clamped to see, and all they did is send me an 80 pound fine, which I just sent it back. In fact, every, every fine they sent me, I sent to my bill for three times as much. That's what you do. So what I'm getting to is, you register everything, uh, you've got no rights on it, as long as you behave yourself, use it how they want, otherwise they'll take it off you or whatever. So cars, as far as I know, there's been one chap in this country that's successfully deregistered his car, because you're only the keeper, that's why you're up. I've got my friend to bring up DVLA and said, um, uh, can you just clarify, am I the registered keeper? She went, yeah. He says, uh, but who owns it? She said, well, you own it. He says, well, can you send me something saying I'm the owner? She went, no, put the phone down straight away. <laughs> so we're keeping it, aren't we, but we don't own it. So one chap in this country, he used to go on the TPUC website. Is this Murphy? I don't know his name. It's not Dave Murphy, no. It's a chap from a long time, only young kid. You think he's the first person to deregister. He now doesn't, not, he doesn't go in the chat rooms, he doesn't talk. We think he's been paid off because he will not tell us how he's done it. Alright, well, I've said something wrong. Right, so I'm just watching the tapping over there. <coughs> okay. Uh, so, as far as we know, he's the first person that's deregistered. Now, I've twigged it now, two and a half years later from being arrested. Uh, my flight's not it? <laughs> <laughs> there seems to be a lot of grinning on that. <laughs> 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 well, you never know, do you? <laughs> what the use it is. Um, Paranoid! Paranoid! <laughs> 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 oh, we think he's deregistered, but... I've now twigged it, so I've pushed the boat out, I've kept going and going, this is just one thing, I've got all these things happening at once, my head's spinning, so I'm trying cars, I'm trying cars, realised, boom, when I got clamped, I got a red ticket and it said, it said, all vehicles registered in the UK must have valid tax test insurance, a sticker. The mate comes to the house, his name's Rob, just by coincidence, Rob, what does that say? You've got to register your vehicle, read it again, read it again, fourth time of reading it, all vehicles registered in the UK must have a valid tax test of insurance. Not all vehicles must be registered. All vehicles registered in the UK must have a Don't tell you have to register your vehicle. So I thought, I don't think, well, we don't have to register and tell you. But it's there in black and white. They're not telling you you've got to register on it. Uh, sorry, you've got to register it. So how did this kid deregister? Well, to deregister, you've got to use their forms. 
He never used their forms, you use your own. So when I got arrested at Silent Road, got cuffed, got took away. Uh, one of the coppers said, to, eight coppers jumped on me, by the way, for a driving offence. Cuffed me immediately. And one of the coppers said to me, your car's got no insurance. He didn't have a trader's policy. I'll never drive around insurance. I said, it's on a trader's policy. He says, well, it's coming up as unregistered. Boom. Hit me. There's a massive difference between deregistered and unregistered. This is what's going to get us hurt again. Using trust back to trust again. So I'm sat in my cell. When I finally get out, I said, where's my car? I parked in the service station at Motway. He says, oh, it's been impounded and we took it away. For no insurance. I said, it's got insurance. Well, I took it away anyway. I'll give it all right. I get out. I was up the following day. Uh, in fact, a friend of mine rang the service station. She says, yeah, it's still here, but it's got a ticket on it from, from DVLA. So I go up next day thinking, yeah, I took it away, they lied. I get there, the mate comes with me just in case I, I do get arrested. No ticket on it either. DVLA has put a ticket on and whipped it back off again. Police have lied to me so I don't go and collect it, say they've impounded it and they're going to destroy it. No one's touched my vehicle. <coughs> Hold on a minute. Why haven't you touched my vehicle? Because it's unregistered. Every vehicle registered in the UK has to have Texas insurance. Not every vehicle has to be registered. The reason it's unregistered is, I've got a friend who's got a car pitch, he sells me a car. He relinquishes all connection to that car, but I don't fill in the slip to volunteer to register. I then write a notice saying I'm the new owner. Big difference owner and register. I inform DVLA. For DVLA and police purposes, Rob Freeman now owns that vehicle. So I'm sending my paperwork and mirroring back what they do. Recorded delivery. Yes, to make sure they get it. Yeah. So what I, what I realised is it's unregistered. So um, if I if he if, if you sell me a car, he fills this part in on the form. He relinquishes all connections with it. But until I fill in that slip and send it back. It then goes from a registered vehicle to an unregistered vehicle. If I try and deregister, they won't let me. But now it's unregistered, it's up to me to register. So what I realised is, most important word, apart from no, we've got 10 minutes left. I realised that anything held in a family trust, or any trust, cannot be taken away. So what do I do? I've put my car in the Freeman Family Trust. What am I? I'm the General Executor of the Freeman Family Trust. I've informed DVLA that blah 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 car is held in the Freeman Family Trust. Rob Freeman is the General Executor of that trust. Have you set up this trust? You don't have to set it up, it's just a piece of paper, you can do it voluntarily, you can do it verbally. Just declare it, hey. Well, that car you, is I'm, in this trust. I'm telling them and then that the trust. Yeah. Is. No, when you're sitting in the trust, you're sitting in the signed by the general executive, which is me. I've got three of them again. <laughs> now, if you... Cars, you can put anything into trust. Just, yeah. Sorry, speak up. You can put any of your property into trust. The you trust is for anything, any property, right? Tangible or non-tangible, or is it intangible? Tangible or non-tangible? Yeah. Tangible as in something you can pick up. Intangible or non-tangible, as in um, a name, something you can't actually copyright, touch, but it's, yeah. it's property, copyright, copyright uh, a security account or a security agreement, or anything like a contract, property, tangible or non-tangible, to be held in a trust, and biological property. I'm now going to put myself in my own trust and my children. If I get this right, Social services can never touch my children. Can't you deregister your children? You can't deregister. You won't let right? you deregister. What I'm going to do is unregister them. Because it's going to be held in trust. Yeah? I'm going to do the same with my house, my children, my cars, and everything. We always used to, this is my brother, we always used to wonder when we were kids, saying possessions nine tenths of law. Hold on, mate. That's fine. Why is, it, why is possession nine tenths of law? Why isn't it ten tenths? They always hold back a provision where they, if you own, if they say you owe, if they claim you owe them money, they can send their officers and bailiffs in to take the possessions away. It's not theft because 
it's my it's in my possession, but it's only nine tenths of the law. Keep that one is it one tenth? Keep that one tenth bite so they can nick it back off you. Alternatively, register. If I had to register that wiper, I'm volunteering that it belongs to them. And as long as I use it properly, start wiping my arse on it. No, they'll take it back. So they take it back. So two two things: register. They now own it, and you've got to use it as they say. Possession is nine tenths of law; they can take anything off you. That's why beds can come in and clear your house. So, anything else you trust, tangible, non-tangible, or biological, cannot be touched. So, of course, you see, Freedom Family Trust, I now, in, uh, a lot of friends say to me, yeah, but you're buying a car off someone. Um, what if you've got your own car now, and you, you can't be registered? So, Tim, for instance, Say you've got a car, you want to keep it, um, I swap my cars every six or twelve months anyway. Bags of crap anyway. You want to keep your car, you spend three or four grand, you want to keep it. So what do you do? So, you're the registered keeper, I'm going to call you Tim Smith, because I know that's not your name. Perfect. Tim Smith owns a car, he wants to keep it, but he wants to deregister. You can't deregister, alright, I'm unregistered. So what he does is, Tim Smith sells the car to the Smith family trust. All above board, he now notifies DVLA that he's no longer the registered keeper anymore because he's sold it to the Smith family trust. Brilliant. I've tried this with a friend where she's done it, she's a, she had a letter, a phone back from DVLA saying we now uh, recognise that you are no longer the registered keeper. She then put it in her own family trust, which is, so Tim puts it in his family trust, Big difference, recording, registering. Never register, always record. So now Tim records the car details to DVLA and the police that the car belongs to the Smith Family Trust. Any dealings from now on is done to by contact the general executor of the trust, known as Tim Smith. You don't need any fancy letter it's just the that? Sorry, you don't get a fancy letter or anything. Just a notice, just a plain old notice and keep copies and um, make sure you take copies and put. So this is where I'm up to now. Uh, there's a lady who's running about in a soft soft top make. She she's still got tests, she insures it, now you just insure it. I don't know if I can cover it, but I want to get onto insurance. Of course we're grateful for insurance. Uh, in fact I'll cover it for five minutes. She runs about in a soft-top Merc, she's still got tests on it, but when it runs out of tests, she's not going to test it. She does insure it, um, she's not paid tax now for probably a year, it's an expensive car. She's been seen by about 150 police and nobody goes near her, because it's in her family trust. So when it runs out of test, which is, I've lost a little touch with it, I should imagine it has run out of test, it still can't be touched. Uh, I dare say you don't have to insure it, but it's not an honourable thing to do, is it? Well, you cars your own, isn't it? It's your carriage, isn't it? Yeah. But if you if you uh, if you're going to run about, if you're going to run about, you've got to have some sort of insurance, haven't you? Because if you bump into someone, it's only fair to pay their damages, isn't it? So are we all out for about another seven or eight minutes? So that's cars, yeah. Uh, well, it's cars, as in. Now, st don't do anything yet because I'm still going to carry on with this. And if there's any comebacks, because I haven't been for months, if nothing comes back in 18 months, then I'm going to show everybody how to do it. But what I want people who do want to, if anybody wants to take this step, it is a big step, let's do it all together. I want 50 people, 100 people, and we'll do it together, because they can't, there's safety numbers, they can't take action. I've been doing stuff on my own, that's why I keep getting locked up. Um, I've got a great thing to tell you about mortgages and houses, but I can't do it tonight. I've found a way and I'm, I've gone up from 85 to 95, I'm now 99% sure. And I won't say that loudly, will I, Bob? And I've stood it from every angle, my head's bursting. I've found a way where we can claim our houses back using this. And they can, we never have to pay another penny and they cannot ever take it off us. And it's just the concept of getting your head around it. And as far as I know, I don't know anybody that's doing it. We've all tried from the mortgage being fraudulent like I did. And the sidestep it because you can break the law because there is no law, there is no court, it's down to being trust and we walk in as trustees. Now I know people have managed to save the mortgages and not pay. Tell me, Blake, I think it's a blind test. 
Um, but your, your, ha oh, what your house itself, um, I found a way where we claim it by. We give them time to disprove it and they cannot do it. And you never have to pay a penny again. And anybody who's been at their house repossessed like I nearly did, if you think it's at their house, I found a way through this where they can, say they, uh, say they paid 100 grand mortgage, say they owed 150, bought a house for 150 grand, they paid 100 off, they couldn't afford it, they got it repossessed, I found a way where they can now claim back three times whatever they paid. If you, they paid 100 grand for a mortgage, they can claim back in punitive damages, punitive means a punishment to the other side, they can now claim back 300 grand. If they got repossessed 10 years ago, they could still claim it back. Now, I found a way to do all this. It's not bothered, it works. I know it works, but I don't want to do anything on my own. If 200, 300 people all do it together as a class action, sorry, a class action, we can't be acting on individually, we can only be acting on as a group, like Kevin Hanks doing me, sir. There's a class action, it's safety in numbers. So, I'm not trying to sell this idea, I'm not trying to convince anyone. I want people to come by, and I'm going to try and do more talks and get it out, and come back and I want someone to say, Rob, you're a knob and it's wrong. And then bring evidence, but so far nobody has. Same as this, nobody's come back yet and I want them to come back. Because if they come back and say it's wrong, they'll say, show me where it's wrong. And we can do it. But nobody has so far, they keep inviting the Well, this is it, we keep trying to be honourable, but they can't disprove anything, can they? Not none of it. I keep writing the powers that be and people that I know, and we've got about seven minutes left, I want to finish. Prove that I'm wrong, please, and they can't. Right, yeah, I'll just mention something there, that blind trust thing. So, have you ever looked into that? No. Because that might have related to some of the courts being tracked back on. I know Tony Blake on two flats in Bristol. <coughs> what his wife brought in, he said he didn't know how to buy it. And then they found out it was all done through a blind okay. trust. Oh, I don't know about it. Five right, I'm just going to finish up. I've only got seven minutes uh, Any talk? Right, so that's car ownership. There's loads more to talk about. There's mortgages, but I want to talk to you about. I said you should, you should have your car insured, but they're all linked together. You've got to register for it, haven't you? You've got to be a registered keeper. Um, it's got to be tested. Blah blah blah. You've got to have a license, and then you get your insurance because they're all linked. They're all linked together. So I found a way where we can insure our cars and be honourable, but not go through the registration system and all that bollocks, how do we do it? Well I found out from an, um, an ex-copper about four years ago and he told me that the police are running about with no insurance, they don't have car insurance, I was like, you what? He says what they have is they have a bond, a million pound bond. In the event, in the event of a copper, a police car having an accident, it activates the bond and they pay the damages. So I started thinking, and, and, and as Alex and, and Paul know, I'm a big uh, believer in mirroring back everything they do, we do the same bike, because how can they argue bike when we're using the system against them? And so I started looking at bonds, and what I realised is, if I can get, if I can get a thousand people, and it's big thinking, and you might say, what a not when I've done, but I know it can be done, I just can't be on my own. If I can get a thousand people, to stick a thousand pounds in a pot, have we not let them go? One million pounds. I think we have. Yeah, and don't you think they'll make an accident up to make your bank? Good point. Okay. So I checked the statistics, I can never say this word, statistics from the Office of National Statistics, I think, yeah. The amount of people insured in this country to the amount of people have accidents is not, the amount of claims is not even 1%. It's not even a tenth of one percent. I don't even think it's. I don't even think it's a square root of one. It's, what, that it's negligible yeah, compared yeah. to the people. Yeah, yeah. So why do people's premiums go up every year? Yeah. They say getting no claims, don't they? They're all about money because they sat on the beach, aren't they, supping drinks and laughing at us? Why do your premiums go up every year? You stick with the same company, you, you it goes up. You swap to a new company, it goes down. So they get the commission. But why are insurance companies making so much money? Because they're the criminals along with the banksters, they're all in it together. <coughs> so, a thousand people stick a thousand pounds in a pot, you've got a million pound bond. Out of that thousand people, you'd be lucky if one person has an accident. St statistically speaking, I can't say that word. That speaking. So, let's say one person has an accident and it's ten grand worth of damage. Ten grand worth of damage. A thousand people for that following year all bunging up a tenery. That's it. Boom. 
You're going to drive for the rest of your driving life on that one thousand pounds. There's an accident. Ten grand worth of damage. Twenty grand worth of damage. Thirty grand worth of damage. Who cares? We all stick thirty quid back in the pot. I worked out that about a million pound bond. Now the problem is, where do we keep this? This is where I need help. A million pound will earn sixty grand a year interest. More than enough to pay two or three people a full time wage for all admin work. Sorted. We've got a million pound bond, we've all gone. If you had a million pound, Tim, or you, John, and you stuck it down, you'd never need any insurance. That's your bond. That's how they work. So why can't we do it? We don't have to go through is it FSA financial services. That's the old then, right? That's the old. That's the old, that is. Bond of trust. We'll put it in a trust. We'll put this in a trust. I don't know who we're going to get to, who we're going to entrust. You can drive for the rest of your life on a thousand pounds. Now, I've put this information out and I must have got 300 people already saying, bloody hell, if that works. Now, I need to iron all creases now and I'm not clever enough, but it's feasible, isn't it? And as far as I know, nobody else is doing it. I don't see why we can't do it. Because what that means is there's no registration on vehicle. There's recording. So my vehicle is recorded in my trust if I want to, I'm not going to tax it. So what about people that are already, like, you know, they've already got their license, they've already got their insurance, they've already got their blah, blah, blah. Send it back. Once you've done this, send your license. I've already sent my life. Why do you need permission to do something lawful? Yeah, so, so what you're saying is, can do it, then send it back, then do that. It's a, it's a set of stages that works out. Yeah. You've got to do it stage by stage, and yeah. it falls into place. And it all comes back to that every single time. And the powers that be, it's about two weeks left. Nobody can come between you and God. Nobody can come between you and your trust. Hey? What we need is, thanks to both for sorting this out, thanks to the radio station, we need a crit critical mass of people. We've got them. I know we've got them, but we're all spread out. Something's got to unite us all to bring us together. And we've also got to get those people that are just sleepwalking into oblivion, aren't they? They, they're going to get an invite, a free holiday to a FEMA camp. They're going to think they're going to book ones, aren't they? The and sad thing is, it's our families, isn't it? It is, and others. But they're going to, and, and if we leave it to them, they're going to just walk into a they're going to sleepwalk into a blizzard, aren't they? Sleep walk into a blizzard aren't they? So, how do we get us united and those people to come over? There's only one way, and it's to get a positive result. It's to claim as houses back, and we'll explain that next time. Sort us cars out, sort us children out, put them in trust. No fucking no, I'm, I'm sorry to swear, but no fucking on this planet is taking my children away from me. I'll chop them. I'm not a violent man. Damn right. I'll, I'll chop them the fucking half first. To so the death on that score. I'll crawl 27 miles through fucking fire for my children. I'm sure you all would. And I'm not having some twat sat in a uniform or a suit. Fucking telling me because he's wearing a costume and he flashes a mirror ID. Fuck off. You know what I mean? They're my children, they're all your children, and we love them and we do the best for them. So no twats getting between me and my children, me and my house, me and my what bit of money I got, and me and people I love. Well, fuck off. Okay, sorry for swearing. So we need a result. If we can claim our houses back, claim our cars back, claim our children back, they can't be touched, and they see us, the ones that aren't aware, see us with a massive result and see that we're doing all right, we're not paying tax, we're living in communities, we're using community shops, we're helping each other. They're going to want to come over because the more it goes on, the more they're going to struggle. And eventually, the critical mass is going to come over because we're going to be doing all right. Lawful bank, if it happens, this sort of stuff, they're going to see us getting results and they're going to want to come over, aren't they? So that's what we're about, that's what the station is about. So that's about it, I'm going to have to close up.